think we're live on Facebook, almost maybe. There we go. Awesome. Good morning, Jess. I see you on there. Okay, so this morning um, we're going to be doing mobility flexibility. Make sure you're there. Okay. So my name is Jessica Davis. I'm a sports instructor here in uh, Gagetown at CFB Gagetown in Fredericton, Brunswick. Um, and like I said, it'll be mobility flexibility this morning. Nice ease into your Friday and your weekend. So I'll just bring up our disclaimer here and read it to you. So, in response to COVID-19, PSP is offering telefitness to Canadian Armed Force members. By using social media platforms, the telefitness class is tailored to Canadian Armed Force members personnel become accessible to all. Prior to participating in the session and to make an informed decision on whether you should seek advice from a qualified exercise professional or healthcare provider, uh, please consult the Get Active questionnaire of the Canadian Society of Exercise, Physiology, and its reference documentation simply by clicking on the links below. Um, so Amanda Murphy, our fitness coordinator, will uh, post that link in the comments. Um, and if it doesn't show up there, then you can find it on one of our previous live videos. Uh, by continuing with this telefitness class, you understand that there is a possibility of physical injury and you agree that you do so voluntarily at your own risk. You also assume all risk of injury and agree to release the Canadian Forces and Welfare Services from any and all claims related to your participation in this telefitness class. All right, that's that. Um, so today's um, mobility class, in the past I've done specifically hips or specific shoulders, but today I'm just going to do kind of a full body, go through some different um, kind of moves, exercises, what have you, to increase mobility and flexibility just in all parts. So we'll go through kind of a muscle group at a time. Some of them will just be full body moves all together. So all you'll need is a mat or a soft surface underneath you just to keep you comfortable, um, as well as you, you may or may not need a block or you can use um, a, a pillow or two stacked. You can use books stacked up. Um, you may or may not need this. We'll see when we get there. So otherwise, we will get started. So we're just going to start with a, a nice and gentle full body warm up, just with some dynamic movements. So you can stand or you can sit to start wherever you are comfortable this morning. We'll start with our next, doing some small rolls back and forth. So bring right to right ear, roll your chin to your chest, and over to the other shoulder and ear on your left. Back around to the right, and just slowly back and forth. Warm up the spine in your neck. You may feel some tension and some tightness, maybe I'm more on one side over the other. Good. And then just have your head. Um, neutral straight up and down to your spine and keep your torso facing forward and just turn your head to the right as far as you can It'll stretch down the side keep it dynamic though so move it over to the left just until you feel that stretch back to center look to the right back to center and just go back and forth just to the point where you stretch in the side of your neck. Good. 
Good. Back to center. We will stand up now if you're not already. And do some shoulder circles. So start small. I know my head's up, but you can still see what I'm doing. Get a little bit bigger. And then really start to exaggerate your roll. So bringing your chest up and out and then rounding your back and your shoulder blades to make really circles. Good. And then switch directions. So starting small circles again. Small circles. Start to make them a little bit bigger. Even bigger. And then really start to exaggerate them, opening up through the chest, rounding through the back and the shoulders. Good. Shake out your arms if you need to. And then plant your feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. And just start some very slight torso twists. So lifting the heel um, of the opposite foot from the direction you're turning. Just nice and slow. Maybe increasing your Yes, a little bit more. Good, come back to center. With that same stance, we're going to squat, stand up, and then hinge and stand up. So your squat is like a normal squat going down, stand back up. Then we hinge from the hip. Keep a slight bend in your knee though. Bring your hands down towards the floor and then stand back up. So all together in a dynamic movement, it's squat, stand, hinge, stand, squat, stand, hinge, stand. So just make sure you keep it nice and fluid, that you're not stopping to stretch statically or still anywhere yet. We're just warming up our muscles, making sure they have some space to move and stretch once we get there. Couple more of these. Maybe you are engaging your glutes to come up on your squat as well as lifting on your hinge. One more. Good. Come back to the front and widen your stance. So nice, nice and wide feet apart, however it's comfortable for you. And we are going to bend into our right knee and lunge, stand back up, bend into the left knee, and back up. So again, just nice and fluid. Get yourself with your hands on your knee you're lunging towards. Play with your stance a little bit if you made your legs too wide or widen them if they're too narrow. Keep your chest up nice and tall. If you're using your hands to support you, maybe you keep them in the air as you're moving back and forth to make it a little bit more strength-based and you're just And one more to each side. Got it, stand back up. Heel toe your feet back together. And we're going to do the chair flow. So you're going to sit your hips back like you're sitting in a chair. 
nice and deep and bring your arms forward um, to counterbalance your weight and then stand up so our feet are close together big toes are touching for this and knees are together as well so chair arms in front and stand back up sit right down and back and stand up so keep your chest as tall as you can through this with your arms sink back stand up starting to build a little bit deep through your legs especially maybe in your shoulders as well And one more, down and back up. Good stuff. All right. And just a little movement for our ankles. So you can either hold on to a wall, just do it with some balance in the air, do some ankle circles. Switch direction. And switch feet. Ankle rolls on the other foot. And switch directions. Good. We're going to continue our warm up to make sure our body is nice and warm before we uh, do too much stretching or crazy movements. So we're going to do some inchworms. Let's do a couple together. So from standing tall at the end of your mat, your feet are about a hip apart, whatever is comfortable. Your feet are gonna stay planted where they are. Your hands will come down to your mat. You can keep some bend in your knees. Walk your hands all the way along your mat until you come out to a high plank. And then walk your hands back up to your toes. So let's try on together. Hands come to the mat. Walk all the way out to high plank. Just take a second or a breath in high plank. And then walk your hands all the way back up. So let's do 10 of these together. Here we go. Walking the hands out, high plank, hold, and walk it back. All the way up to standing. Back down. High plank, make sure you get the correct high plank position. And all the way back to stand. That's two. Going for 10. Three. Remember to keep your rate of breathing nice and steady through this. It's not meant to be too difficult of an exercise. It's just enough to get you warm, but keep your body fairly calm. So just make sure you're still breathing nice and deep. I lost track of counting. So let's say this is seven. All the way back up. All the way back up. There's eight, two more. And the last one. And all the way back up to standing, awesome. Okay, 
So our next one in a tabletop position is kind of a two two step movement. So we'll come down into tabletop. Again, this is keeping keeping on the getting warmed up track. So in tabletop, your hands are directly under your shoulders, knees are under the hips. And we are, for this one, going to tuck our toes under. So tuck your toes under so that you could lift your knees and just be on your toes and your hands. So from tabletop, we're going to, we are going to lift our knees first actually. So tuck your toes, lift your knees. So you're in like a hovered tabletop and your toes are together touching and your knees are still under your hips if you were to put them down. So tabletop, and then we're gonna push back through our hands into kind of a lifted child's pose. So I'm on my toes right now, my knees are off the ground, and then come back into tabletop, and you can set your knees down for a second. Okay, so hover your knees, push back into a lifted child's pose, come back to tabletop, and set your knees down just for a breath. Lift the knees, push back onto your toes, back into tabletop, and set your knees down. If it's too much for you to lift your knees and come up on your toes, then you can just go back and forth here, either with your toes tucked, or you can have your feet flat on the ground like you would for a child's pose, and just rock back and forth from tabletop to child's pose here. So we'll continue with this. If you want to, you can tuck the toes, big toes, hover the knees, push back into that lifted child's pose, come back to tabletop, set down the knees for a breath. Knees up, push back, and tabletop, set the knees down. Up and back, tabletop, knees down. A few more. Up and back, tabletop, knees down. Take a breath. Lift the knees, push back, tabletop, knees down. Lift, push back, tabletop, knees down. Two more with the knees hovered. Hover, push back, come forward. Knees down, one more. Up and back, forward, knees down. Good stuff. This time, we're going, if you were doing it with your knees lifted, we're all going to do it together with a nice um, wide child's pose. Our knees are gonna stay on the mat. Tops of the feet stay on the mat as well. So my knees are wide in my stance, so my knees are no longer under my hips and my big toes are touching behind me. So we're gonna come from this wide-legged tabletop, just push directly back into wide-legged child's pose, come back up. So that can be our flow. So get your knees wide, to touch. Your hands are still under your shoulders. Push back into wide-legged child's pose, inhale, exhale. Come back up over to inhale. Exhale, push back. Inhale up. Exhale, push back. Inhale up. Exhale, push back. Continue this with your own depth of breath. So inhale to rise into tabletop. Exhale to push back. Now, as you start and continue going through this, since it's a pretty simple motion, I want you to bring your focus into your hands. So your hands right now, it's probably your palms pressing into the mat and your fingers aren't quite as active. So continue your movement up and down with your hips and your torso, but just also think about your hands, press your fingertips into the mat so that your fingers just slightly have an arch to them. So your fingertips press in, and then the base of your fingers where it connects to your palm presses in. 
and the center of your palm is also arched. So you have attachment point to the floor in your fingertips, in the base of your fingers where it connects to your palm, same thing in your thumb, and then as well as um, kind of the heel of your palm. So nice active hands. That's always a good, a good uh, strength to practice. Anytime you're in tabletop, that's how your hands should be nice and strong. Okay, let's do two more of these. Forward and back. One more forward and back. Good. Come back up to a neutral tabletop. And then just, you can actually sit back on your hips, roll out your wrists a little bit. We're going to do some wrist stuff. Wrist mobility here now that we have them warmed up. Let me just check on Facebook here. It says we're still going. I just don't have a picture. Okay, so tabletop for our wrist. If you've rolled them out a bit while seated, switch directions. Whatever you need to do. Okay, just to warm up fingers and wrists a little bit more before we get into this, we're going to flick, like you're flicking water off your fingers. So make a fist and then push out like you're flicking water off. So let's do that for about 30 seconds, just to really warm up the fingers, wrists, and forearms. Flick that water off. About 10 more seconds. And five, four, three, two, one. Good. Okay, so coming to tabletop. I'm gonna go with this direction so you can see me first. So hands are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips. Our fingers are still pointing forward as they normally would in a tabletop. And we're just going to circle our torso around so our anchor point is our wrists and hands. And then we're going to circle our torso around those two points. So we're just getting a bit more range of motion through your wrists. If I turn back this way, you can see I'm moving out over my wrist and then back over my hips. I'm just rotating back and forth. If you would like, you can start to move the direction of your hands so you'll get a bit different um, range of motion and stretch in your wrist. So now if you turn your fingers, instead of being in tabletop with our fingers forward, turn your fingers out so they're just on a 45 degree angle. And then do the same motion. Moving your torso around in circles as your wrist being the anchor point. If this is really tiring for your wrists, then you can sit up and back and just give them a roll out if you'd like. If you're still going, let's switch directions. So whenever you need to, you can just sit up and back on your feet and just give your wrists a roll out. But again, while you're doing this, make sure you're using active hands. So your fingertips are pressing into the mat, the base of your fingers where it connects to your palm, and then the heel, the outside edge of your palm. All right, back to center. Sit back wherever you're at and just give your wrists a roll out. And switch directions. Whatever 
it feels good. Last time we're going to bring our hands out so that fingertips are pointing out to each side. And with this one, um, we'll eventually start to bring our hands a little closer in together if it feels okay for you. So fingertips are pointing out and we're going to do the same motion. So bringing our torso around those anchor points in a circle. And my toes are supporting me and my knees are supporting me at the back. So just tracing circles around your wrists. So if, if what we've done so far has been enough for your wrists and you just want to sit back and roll them out, then please feel free to do that. If, uh, if you're liking this movement for your wrists and it feels good for your forearms, just start to walk your hands a little bit closer together so the space between your wrists is smaller. And then don't make it too small yet though, but continue those gentle torso circles around the hands as your anchor point, making sure you're keeping active hands and fingers while you do this. You can bring them a little bit closer together again if you'd like. Good, and then wherever you're at, just sit back and roll them out. Working on your wrists, getting range of motion in them and building strength through how you're pressing your hands is uh, something that's really important if you're into handstands or doing any type of handstand push-up. All your strength in your base starts in your hands, so it's really important to do those type of movements. Uh, before you go into a handstand. All right. So we'll move into a movement now. So we're going to do a kneeling mountain climber. So depending on where your hands are at, you can either continue doing this from your hands on your wrists, or you can rise up onto your fingertips because you won't need too much weight into your hands. So try and think of, of most of your weight still staying back in your, in your knees and your feet. Um, but if you want to continue working on strengthening your hands, pressing your fingertips and base of your fingers into the mat, then you can do so here. So on tabletop, take a breath in, so inhale. Bring your left foot to your right hand, or sorry, your left foot to your left hand, and exhale here. Step the foot back as you inhale. Exhale, bring right foot to right uh, hand, and exhale here. So we're just doing, it's like a mountain climber movement, but it's just from kneeling. Come to the front for you. So inhale, step foot forward, exhale. Inhale, put that knee back. Step foot forward and exhale. Inhale. So keeping it nice and fluid as you go. If you're not able to get your knee all the way up here, so you can also use your, um, your block or your books or whatever it is. So by rising up your torso, it's not as much of a range of motion or a stretch in that leg coming forward. So you can stay here, put the knee back, inhale, forward, Exhale. So same movement, you're just a smaller range of motion and you are lifted through the chest. So 
So just continue switching back and forth with each breath. And let's do one more for each side. Good. Sit back on your heels again. And just give your wrists a roll out. Since we've been up on our wrists for a while. All right, now that we've got a bit more warmed up in our legs also, we're, we'll continue with that movement. So we're going to do our a shin box. So in a previous um, live video, I did the 90-90 hip movement for hip mobility. We're going to make that a bit smaller. So a shin box instead. Um, so I'm sitting mainly on my left um, pelvic bone or my left hip, my left glute, and then my um, thigh comes out and my left foot comes back to my right knee. So most of my weight is shifted onto my left um, side right now, and then my right leg continues here. So it's similar to the 90 degree bends that we had in our leg if you saw the previous video. Um, but this time we're just closing it up. So in our shin box is what this is called. Our feet are going to stay where they are. We're going to lift the knees and bring them to the opposite side. So now I'm in the exact same position, but just flipped. Now predominantly my weight is on my right hip bone rather than my left. So let's flip it back over. So feet stay where they are, just the knees lift. And you can use your arms to support you through this movement if you need to. So just shifting back and forth here. Again, try to match it with your breath. So inhale your knees up to center and then exhale, let them fall back down. You can really slow down this movement and feel that range of motion happening through your hip joint if you want. To make it more active, lift your hands off the floor if they were supporting you and just allow your core to stabilize and flip back and forth. So you can either continue just with that motion or if you want to add a little bit more for the upper body in range of motion, we'll flip the knees like we have been. If you're going to the right, you're going to take your right and place it down beside you and then lift your left up in the air and then come back to center. So it's a fluid motion, flip the knees to the left, left hand comes down behind you, right hand kind of windmill circles around to lift overhead and then come back. Flip it to the right, right hand is behind me, left hand sweeps overhead and then come back to center. I'll show you from a different angle. So flipping my knees to the left, left arm comes down behind me, right arm sweeps up and around to kind of open up through that, through the chest and the side. Flip to the right, right hand behind, left hand sweeps up and around and back. So keeping it nice and fluid. That reach around feels really good in the morning. Get a nice stretch out. So just let's do one more on each side now. So over to the right. And over to the left. Okay, I'm back 
back to center. Okay. Next one, we're going to continue in the legs. Come back into tabletop just for a second, though. From tabletop, push up into kneeling. So you're just on both knees right now. We're going to bring our right foot up and forward. So we're now in kind of a low kneeling lunge, and both knees are at 90 degrees. So 90 degree bend at the knee and the legs. From here, we're going to keep it and make it dynamic again with a couple different, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a couple different movement patterns. So from low lunge, if we tuck our pelvis under, so think about bringing your belly button towards your chest, but it's just a very slight movement. If you can see that in my hips, so I'm at kind of a neutral here, and then if I tuck my pelvis under, now I just created a stretch through my front left hip flexor. So neutral, my pelvis is kind of tipped forward, and my butt sticks out, and then if I tuck my pelvis under me and roll it forward, then I've created that stretch in my hip flexor. So do that with your pelvis. Roll the base of your pelvis forward, thinking about belly button to chest, and you'll create that stretch through your hip flexor. So we'll just stay here for a moment until your that kind of sinks into your body where the stretch is coming from, how it's happening. You're turning on your core, activating it a little bit to make that stretch. So we're not tilting forward to create that stretch. We're staying in the 90 degrees and just tipping the pelvis to get that hip flexor stretch. So now from here, we're going to sink our hips back and bring the uh, heel of our right foot to the mat, bring your toes to the sky on the right foot. Now you're getting a stretch through the right um, hamstring. So stay here for a breath and just let it sink in. And then come back up through to your kneeling lunge. Depending on where your foot needs to be for that hamstring stretch, it might move forward a bit in your um, kneeling lunge. That's okay. Again, just tuck the pelvis here for the hip flexor stretch. Take a breath. And then sink it back again. Hamstring stretch on the opposite side. Take a breath. Inhale back up. Tuck the pelvis for your hip flexor. Inhale and exhale, move through to that hamstring stretch. If you need to double up your mat under this knee or place something more cushioned under it, then feel free. But just do a couple more rounds moving through these two positions. And just taking a breath in each one. One more time up for the hip flexor stretch. This time, rise your hand. So the same um, arm that you're using, that you're stretching your hip flexor. So I'm left side hip flexor. I'm going to put my left hand in. If you lift that hand in the air, you'll feel just a little bit deeper of a stretch through that left hip flexor. And just hold here for three or four breaths this time. Good. Set that hand down, and we'll come into our hamstring stretch one more time. So staying fairly neutral in the spine, not rounding through the back too much. And just breathe through that hamstring stretch for three or four breaths. Good. 
Now you can either, you can set your hands down or come back up to kneeling, but we're going to switch sides. So now your right knee is down on the mat, and then bring your left, oops, bring your left up to that kneeling lunge. So 90 degrees or a little bit bigger um, in both legs. Start with the pelvic tilt of our hip flexor stretch. So this time it's on my right side over here. So tuck the hips under, belly button to chest. Take a breath. Bring your hands to the mat and let your hips sink back a little bit. Bring your left toes to the ceiling and feel that hamstring stretch on the left side. Rise back up. Do your pelvic tilt to get the, the hip flexor stretch on the right. Come back down. Hamstring stretch on the left. Rise back up. Tilt the pelvis, hip flexor on the right. Hands to the mat, hamstring stretch on the left. Come back up, hip flexor on the right. Do, do it one more time through each and then we'll hold. Hamstring on the left. This time, come on up. Our hip flexor stretch on the right. So tuck the pelvis and then bring the right hand up in the air. And hold here for three or four breaths. Bring your hands to the mat. Sink back into that hip flexor stretch. Keep the spine fairly neutral, not rounding through the back. And stay here for three or four breaths. Good. Come back up onto your hands. Bring that left knee back and around. And then widen out your knees and just sink back for a child's pose. So bring your forehead to the mat and just stretch your arms out in front of you. And breathe there for a few breaths. So if you want to rest a little bit longer, feel free to stay in child's pose and do these next uh, few deep breaths. Or if you would like to come up to seated, then you can do so. So in seated, we're just gonna take five really nice deep long breaths all together to finish off. So inhale, let's rise the arms up. Inhale all the way in and then exhale. Just let the arms fall to your sides. Inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, let it go. So just let yourself audibly sigh for these last three. Inhale all the way up. And let it out. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Good. If you want to stay in child's pose for a few more breaths to just continue with that resting, um, resting stillness and focus on your breath, then please feel free to do so. Otherwise, I am signing off for now. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Please continue to stay healthy, um, stay safe, and I will see you next week.